Hello chemistry students. So I'm going to try and go over the homework with you. We'll start out here on worksheet six. So let's show all right. Um, let's show the bonding between the hydrogens taking place. We'll start out by drawing the uh, Lewis dot diagrams for the atoms involved and then we'll show how they share to uh, achieve an octet or a noble gas-like configuration of electrons. The hydrogens are really simple. All they can do here is just single bond to one another. The, uh, and they, they do have an octet in the sense that hydrogen's uh, nearest noble gas is helium, which has two electrons, and each hydrogen has two electrons, counting the electrons shared in the bond. So. Let's look at the fluorine next, based on its position in the periodic table. Uh, fluorine has seven valence electrons because it's in group 17. All right, and when those bond, they will also single bond with one another um, to form an octet, and I'll show you how that works. There's that fluorine with its seven. There's that fluorine with its seven, and there's the single bond. So when you count electrons for this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the other one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The electrons in the bond count for uh, both fluorines, both atoms involved in the bond, uh, giving both of them an octet. All right, let's do oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16. It has six valence electrons. And in order to get an octet, let's take a look at what will happen here. All right, so sharing one pair isn't quite enough for the oxygen. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that doesn't quite give it an octet. But if they share two pairs of electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the octet rule is satisfied. All right, nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. All right, and uh, let's check out nitrogen. By the way, it's in group 15. That's how you would predict that it has five valence electrons. All right, so sharing one pair isn't quite enough. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we go two more pairs, then we'll get to an octet. By the way, the difference between these bonds, so we have a uh, single bond up here with the fluorines, and then a double bond between the oxygens, and then a triple bond between the nitrogens. Triple bonds are stronger, in other words, they require more energy to break, and they're shorter. The nitrogen atoms would actually be closer together in the nitrogen triple bond than the fluorine atoms are in the fluorine single bond. All right, so let's do carbon dioxide. All right, so carbon has four valence electrons. Each oxygen has six. All right, so we're going to put all those together. All right, so the carbon can form four bonds with its four valence electrons. Each oxygen can only form two bonds. So let's check this out. Now that gives oxygen an octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon doesn't have an octet yet though. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's put this other oxygen over here. And hopefully at this point you find that to be unsurprising that this will happen. Oh, draw that other 
balance electron there. And uh, there it is. Okay. So, oh yeah, and let's check the octet. So this oxygen is satisfied now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And carbon is satisfied with the octet rule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And lastly, let's do the H2O. All right. And we already know that oxygen can form... Uh, two bonds, hydrogen can form one each. So there's a single bond and there's another single bond. That's what that would look like. All right, on to uh, worksheet seven. We're going to name some uh, covalent compounds. And here we go. Uh, by the way, just to review. So covalent compounds, uh, binary covalent compounds are going to contain two nonmetals like carbon and oxygen. Uh, this is not for ionic compounds, but when you're naming a covalent compound, all you have to do is write the name of the first element, then write the name of the second element. If the first element has a prefix, or excuse me, if it has a um, subscript, then you use a prefix. In the second element, always gets a prefix regardless. So let's uh, go through and name some of these. All right, carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide. This is easy. Di for the two, mono for just being one. No charges because these are covalent compounds, not ionic compounds. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide. Dinitrogen. Monoxide. Nitrogen, monoxide. All right, dinitrogen, trioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. Dinitrogen tetroxide. Tetra, T T R A, is the prefix for four. And then um, we drop the A because A and O. Uh, don't really go beside each other in the English language. And this last one is dinitrogen pent oxide. All right, um, we'll keep going on to worksheet eight. So we're going to write some formulas. Again, do not use charges, just the prefix tells you the number of each atom. So sulfur dioxide is SO2. Phosphorus pentabromide is PBr5. Uh, phosphorus trifluoride is PF3. Selenium trioxide. Diphosphorus monoxide. Um, phosphorus monoxide. Diphosphorus trioxide. All right, diphosphorus pinoxide. And so on. All right, uh, this is worksheet nine. We'll call this the lost worksheet because uh, it did not appear in the original packet really. Uh, your worksheet nine is different than this one. So take a moment, try all of these, pause the video, try all of these, and then come back and watch the solutions. Because this is important, because you've got to 
identify whether the compounds are ionic or covalent, then use the appropriate rules and name or write the formula for each compound. So now that you've returned, let's uh, go through and carry out some of the naming stuff for these. All right, so I'll start off with the um, just deciding whether these are ionic or covalent. Okay, ammonium phosphate, it's got two polyatomic ions in it, it's ionic. Iron two oxide, that's ionic. It's got a metal and a non-metal in it. Ionic, um, carbon monoxide is covalent because it's got um, two non-metals in it. Calcium chloride has a metal and a non-metal, it's ionic. Potassium nitrate has a metal and a polyatomic ion in it. All right, so potassium nitrate is um, ionic. It's got a metal and a polyatomic ion in it. Sulfur dioxide has two nonmetals, so it's covalent. Magnesium hydroxide, metal, polyatomic ion, it's ionic. Aluminum sulfate is uh, also ionic. It's got a metal and a polyatomic ion. Same thing here. Uh, this is also ionic. Lead chromate, metal, and a polyatomic ion. That's ionic. Diphosphorus pentoxide. Um, you know, I'll stick with what was on the screen originally. I'll just stop there. Um, let's see. Diphosphorus pentoxide is going to be covalent because it's got two nonmetals in it. Potassium permanganate. All right, and I think I'm going to run out of time on this video, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through and write the formulas for these. All right, ammonium phosphate, when you put those together, it's ionic, so you have to consider the charges. Ammonium is a plus one ion. Um, phosphate is a minus three, so they'll have to go together in a three to one ratio. So uh, the ammonium is a polyatomic ion with the formula NH4, and then phosphate PO4, uh, and it's a three negative, but we don't show charges on the neutral compound. All right, iron two oxide. Iron two tells you has a positive two charge. Oxide based on its position on the periodic table, has a negative two charge. It's in group 16. Um, all nonmetals in group 16 will do negative two in ionic compounds. And just put those together because their charges exactly cancel each other out. Iron three oxide, on the other hand, is plus three. Uh, oxide is still negative two. So um, Fe2. O3. You have to put them together in uh, a ratio so that the charges uh, will cancel out. So two positive threes will cancel out three negative twos. All right, carbon monoxide, covalent, no charges required, just do CO. Uh, calcium chloride is ionic, calcium is in group two, so it's plus two. Chloride is uh, minus one based on its position on the periodic table, so it's going to be CaCl2. Uh, potassium nitrate, plus one, it's in group one. Nitrate is a minus one polyatomic ion. Just put them together. All right, uh, sulfur dioxide is covalent. Just use the prefixes, so SO2. Uh, magnesium hydroxide is uh, ionic. Magnesium is plus two. Hydroxide is minus one. Um, so you need two of the minus ones to go with the positive one. Aluminum sulfate. Aluminum is uh, one of the memorizable ions. It's got a plus three charge. Sulfate has a negative two charge. So those will go together in a uh, two to three ratio. So Al2, and then parentheses around the polyatomic ion, SO4, and that's the formula. All right, copper 2 sulfate uh, tells you the charge is plus 2. Sulfate is negative 2, so CuSO4. If you put the pentahydrate on it, penta means 5, hydrate means water. Um, so the ways you can write that, you can do CuSO4 um, 
with five 